911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome to Tactical Living by Leo Warriors. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, and I'm here with my co-host and husband, Clint Walton. How are you doing? Today, we're going to discuss a rather sensitive topic, and we're going to talk about suicide, and in particular, its relationship and the increase of suicide rates as it pertains to first responders. And we're going to talk about this in hopes of shedding some light and bringing some awareness to the topic. I was looking it up online, and I read that 163 police officers killed themselves in 2018. And that's astronomical compared to only 143 officers were killed actually in the line of duty. Yeah, I think it was 145 um, officer line of duty deaths for 2018. But we don't ever think about officers committing suicide. We look at officers as these men and women who are very strong and brave, and they put on this suit of armor, literally, every day that they go to work. And they never let us see, us, meaning the community, the public that they serve, that there's something going on internally. And I know from being a wife of a police officer for over 11 years, you see things, Clint, in your line of work that most people are not conditioned to see. We're not supposed to see half of the things that first responders see every day. And this could be whether you're a police officer, a firefighter, a medic, you're in the military. You see things that the common populace just don't see. And no one ever really teaches you in how to handle those situations. And a lot of police agencies or any first responder agencies don't have a resource available for any first responder to learn how to deal with those. Yeah, and I know that from researching a little bit that I read, there's only 10% of United States agencies that even offer any kind of suicide prevention programs. And I know for your department and a lot of other departments, there are therapists and um, you'll have to talk about that a little bit more, but I know there's like an advisory program in place in case an officer does experience something and feels the need to reach out. Well, in my agency, like many others, we do have a peer support program, but normally that's surrounded with people that you work with on a daily basis. And there's kind of a stigma to saying something to them because one, it's a a fine line of being a mandated reporter and trying to say anything to someone that you actually have a bond where you see them as your brother or sister, where it's almost worrisome that what if they tell somebody else how I'm feeling or what if they report this to my supervisor and they start judging me on those emotions or feelings. What's the repercussion of that? Like, let's say that you were just venting to one of your partners about just witnessing, I don't know, I can name a million of the most terrible things you see all the time, but let's just go deep and we'll just say a child death. And you were talking to them and they felt the need to report that. And in all, in all rightness, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. When you're a first responder, it's very important to make sure that you're emotionally on your A game, right? So what happens if, if somebody does report just maybe some concern because you voice something to them? Well, it all depends. I mean, they might actually refer you out to some type of psychiatrist, or they could actually say you're not fit for duty and take you off work. And you know, everyone goes, well, this this is what you signed up for. Well, I don't think anyone signs up for having to see half the horrific things that we ever do. Um, With that being said, there are professionals out there. Now, if you say something criminal or 
that you're truthfully going to harm yourself and they believed it, then they, of course, they're going to report it. But just learning how to deal with that, there's not a lot out there. Yeah, absolutely. And there's this fine line between, I think, the macho scenario of somebody wanting to keep everything bottled up versus having some sort of outlet. And I know that for you, Clint, we have a very open line of communication, but even with us, there's this silent line where there are things that you just don't talk about with me. And you do that for my protection. I know that most first responders probably try to do the same thing with protecting their family from those types of visions in their head. So what's something that you do apart from that to make sure that you have a way to release this to where it's not being bottled up emotionally and then even worse, being compounded time and time again? What really works for me, one is working out. I really enjoy hopping on the elliptical and working out and weightlifting and that relieves some of that tension. But a lot of the stuff we see, it still comes back and that doesn't always necessarily deal with it. But having a relationship with someone else who is one of your partners and and you develop that bond to where pretty much you guys have that unwritten rule where you can talk about anything. They've witnessed horrific things. You've witnessed horrific things. Being able to vent those without judgment is so important because if you just bottle it up, it becomes unbearable at some points. And I know that we've also seen a lot of your friends, a lot of your partners where they don't have that outlet. And in turn, they've decided to turn to other things like alcohol, for example. You have a lot of partners that will invite you to do something after work. And you just politely tell them no thank you because you know that that involves going to a bar or hanging out at their house and drinking all night. And that's just not your thing. Not at all. And I don't knock anyone for doing that, but they do hopefully recognize it's not really helping their situation either, whether it is dealing with something emotional. And one thing I do feel bad about is maybe that's them trying to reach out to me to help them. But for the most part, I think it's just getting away from the work environment, hanging out, wanting to drink. But if you're going out and drinking with your partners or who, you know, whoever is on your team or your coworkers, it's not really getting out of that work environment, right? Not at all. It's all we do. We have a joke is when we're at work, we talk about home. When we're at home, we talk about work. Yeah, it's funny to say that's a joke, but it's really nothing to joke about, right? Not at all. And I think that it's important to have that complete disconnect. I know for you, I mean, my own coach was gracious enough to get on the phone with you and kind of talk you through a technique of being able to disconnect yourself from work before you even come home to me. And that's so important because if you're bottling up the negativity from your day when you're on your way home to me, as soon as you walk into the door and you see my face, neurologically, there's connections that are made that are associating those negative feelings with me. And when I recognized that, that was something that I really began to do that deep work on and and try getting my out of my own head on my way home and using that as a decompression time and those tools that your coach taught me into when I'm home, I'm home and being able to separate it, but be present with you when I got home. It's important to point that out because I think no matter what profession you're in, I mean, as a police officer, you're an authority figure But that doesn't mean that you're above emotional feelings. You're still human. And even me doing all the things I do, that doesn't exclude me from needing to have a coach in my own life, somebody who will hold me accountable, somebody that I can 
air my shit out to when I need to. And to really have that outlet, the things that maybe customarily we don't talk about in our marriage. And it's not that I'm hiding anything from you. It's just when you have somebody in a professional relationship that you're paying for a service with, you tend to talk about different things and that the dynamics of those conversations are different. Oh, completely. And when you are in an uh, environment where it's a complete judgment-free zone, no matter what you say, it's almost eye-opening on how you truly feel about that situation, whatever it may be. So for anybody that's maybe worried that somebody in their own life might be dealing with some emotional stress that they, they haven't quite aired out yet, they haven't extended the hand and said that it's okay for somebody to help them. What are some of the things that you've identified that maybe other people can maybe look out for, not only in other people, but in themselves? In recognizing some of my past experiences, as well as a lot of my partner's experiences, I've noticed that, you know, the reckless behaviors or, you know, the withdrawing from any given situation or life in general are two of the biggest signs that we do to handle these situations where, you know, you go home, you sit on the couch, turn on the TV, and just zone out. Zoning out is something that it's healthy to a degree, but you're never dealing with what's truly going on with you. And I know you've had a lot of people reach out to you when something has happened. And I think the best advice would be to try to find some sort of buddy system. You have a really good friend who's a reserve officer and you guys make sure that you go outside of your work element completely And you do things to disconnect where you can air anything that you need to and get anything off your chest, whether it's work related or anything you're dealing with at home or how any of the two relate to one another. And I know that's been really beneficial for you. Oh, it most definitely has been. It's been something that our friendship has grown more and more to where him and I can talk about pretty much anything and and there's really no filter to it because it's something I know he's been through a lot too and has seen and experienced what I have in different degrees and being able to air that to him it almost takes that weight off of you. I think that usually family are probably the first to know with regards to any of those types of behaviors that you had just mentioned. I know if you were acting reckless or maybe withdrawing or not talking to me as much, there's been a time where I told you like, Hey, go, go hop on a date with your friend, because I think you just need a, an escape an exit. You need to have that filter to where you can have somebody to air it all out with and then come back home to me the way that you're supposed to be with me. And what's really cool about those experiences is sometimes we don't even talk about anything relevant. It's just being in that environment that's not your regular one and you just kind of talk about what you really enjoy, like whether it's coffee or fishing or riding horses. It's just having that outlet to go out and do something out of the ordinary. It's important to have that whether you're a first responder or not. We all live in a day and age where it's just getting more and more difficult every single day. And for us to be able to shift gears a little bit, plan a vacation, plan a day trip, get out into nature. I mean, truly, many of us can't say the last time that we just went outside and we're just there. We just allowed ourselves to connect with the earth, planting plants, playing a game, having a picnic, like name something, right? And it's important to do those things because it's an added stimulus that gets us out of our normal routine. And I think as it pertains to this episode, it's so important for anybody listening who might be feeling any of these things to understand that it's okay. There's nothing wrong with you for bottling up these feelings and for having these emotions. It makes you completely human. 
But what makes it wrong is when you don't have any sort of outlet, any kind of release, because we all know it's like the kettle pot, right? Ready to explode. And you don't ever want to be that person. You don't ever know when that could happen. It can happen randomly at a grocery store or at a child's soccer game. And when you just decide that you just want somebody to be that outlet for you, then you're really able to enjoy your tactical living.